Listen now to the call to worship. To you, O Lord, we lift our souls. To you we offer our lives. For you are good and forgiving and abounding in steadfast love. In heaven, on earth, there is none like you. Your works are beyond compare. For you are great. You work wonders. You alone are God. Please hear now the prayer of confession. Do not fear, you tell us, but we cower before threats to our comfort and security, not trusting your promise to care for us, nor boldly stepping forward in faith. Take up the cross, you tell us, but we live as though death still holds dominion, and refuse to take risks for the sake of the gospel. We fail to challenge powers that diminish and principalities that destroy. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to live with you and for you. Make us worthy to bear the name of Christ. Congratulations to all of the kids that have graduated from kindergarten this week and all the different grade schools that they finished up a very challenging year and to our college graduates that were listed earlier in the service. Um, very proud of all of you. I want to talk a little bit about your plans and I'm sure that's something you are asked almost daily, right? What's next? So as you came in, I know John, I watched him be asked by two different people in just a matter of moments, what's next? Where are you going? So I'm going to see if I can summarize for everybody, because I'm mic'd, they're not. Uh, John, FLCC, correct? And hoping to major in business management. Jason, also FLCC, and you're going to continue working at Beef and Brew as well? 
great. Love their takeouts. <laughs> have you decided on a major? No, not yet. Most freshmen have not. <laughs> so no worries there. Rye, you're going to Cornell, huh? Yeah. All right, great. And chemical engineering? Yep. Wow. Took me twice to get through chemistry in high school. <laughs> it's awesome. And our Villa Victorian from Geneva High School, Ryan, that's fantastic. And you are going to Virginia Tech. And I, I can't remember what you said you're going to major in besides tennis. <laughs> Data analytics. Whoa. <laughs> that's awesome. So I know you've already read and you've heard uh, references to Jeremiah 29 today about God and what God's plans are for you. And, and there's definitely a great purpose. You, you're already fulfilling an incredible purpose just by being who you are. Um, you have all impressed me for the seven, eight years that I've known you and uh, continue to amaze all of us that are blessed to have you in our lives. Um, I was digging and digging and digging for something to say to you or share with you. And I know this may sound a little lame to just take a poem from that some of you have probably already heard from Mother Teresa. But when I graduated in 1984, I can still remember this being shared the year before by Steve Hall, whose mother, Liz Hall, is a member here. And it, I thought of it so many times over the years that I thought, I don't think I'm going to be able to find anything that's really going to say anything better than I can, or than, than, this, than this does. This is what she has written on the wall in Calcutta, India, in one of the orphanages. It says, people are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enema, enemies. Succeed anyway. If you're honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find sincerity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today may often be forgotten, but do good anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never be enough, but give your best anyway. And in the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. And I hope and pray that you keep the general sentiment of that alive in your hearts as you go forward. I'm sure you have mixed emotions. This is a, an exciting time, but you're also going to be pulling away from home and taking on new opportunities that you haven't faced before in a challenging time. So I wish you the best. Please bow your heads in prayer. One tree can start a forest. One smile can begin a friendship. One hand can lift a soul. One word can frame a goal. One candle can wipe out darkness. One laugh can conquer gloom. One hope can raise our spirits. One touch can show you care. One life can make a difference. Be that one today. Amen.
Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. Listen to the word from the Gospel of Matthew. Come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Hear these words of assurance of God's grace and forgiveness. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Ryan, Rye, Jason, and John, we are so proud of you for accomplishing what you have in high school, for graduating in a time which is historic, crazy, difficult times, right? And for going forward into a new place, a new time, a new chapter of your lives. The scriptures that uh, you just read and I chose, um, you may say, well, why did she choose that scripture? But let me say, the prophet Jeremiah, I believe, is speaking to you and to all of us. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says God. Plans for your welfare, for you to prosper. Not meant to harm you in any way. God wants the best for you and I want the best for you too. God wants you to have a future with hope. And boy, do we need hope right now, all of us. So I'm just going to stop there because I want you to understand that the prophet Jeremiah is speaking to a group of people who have been moved out of their homes, who are living in another place. They're exiled. It's a difficult time for them. They're always longing to come back to home or, or to be restored to Israel. And God says, you know what? Prosper where you are. Grow where you're planted. Make the best of this situation. Do what you need to do to enjoy where you're at. I mean, college, wow, you know? New friends, new opportunities. Grow where you're planted. Plant seeds where you, where you are in the colleges of your choice. You have a future, and God and this whole congregation wants the best for you. The next part of this scripture, which I forgot to say in my first version of the sermon, is that when you call upon God and you pray to God, have the confidence that God will hear you, will listen to you, to will be with you, and when you search for God's spirit in your life, during your studies, in your difficult times, your challenging times, God will be there with you if you seek God with your whole heart. The gospel lesson is Jesus talking to his disciples, basically saying, you know, if you follow me, it shouldn't be very difficult. Because my yoke, like oxen have a yoke, is light. Come to me, all who are weary. And this is a message for everybody, because I think we're all a little weary of the COVID-19. We become weary when we deal with the constant reality of injustice. We are carrying a heavy burden right now in the society, in this world. But learn from Christ, who called everyone, who 
who respects everyone, who calls us to be just and compassionate. That burden of following Christ is not a burden. It's an obligation. It's a discipline. Love your neighbor as yourself and love God. Simple commandment. I know you can do it. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your heart. I am so proud of you. And I have been very blessed to travel seven years with you in this church to watch you grow up and mature and accomplish. And I'm excited for your futures. May God bless you. As God's people called to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the whole church, the church family around the world, saying in our hearts or out loud as you wish these words. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. That all people of faith understand God's will for us to discover unity in Christ and exercise their gifts in service of all. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. That the earth may be freed from war, famine, and disease, and the air, soil, and water cleansed of poison that the scientists and medical community and institutions find antidotes for the coronavirus and bring healing to the people in every nation. Hear our prayer. That you will give this nation's leaders wisdom and courage to pursue just priorities so that we may be reconciled and live in peace. May we be peacemakers in our own community and our families. 
loving justice and kindness and walking humbly with you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. That you will comfort and empower those who face any difficulty. That you are with those who are facing surgery, rehabilitation after surgery, be with those who are going through chemotherapy or other treatment for cancer. We ask for healing for those who are feeling the stress of isolation, poverty, depression, and grief. We pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. As we celebrate the accomplishment of our children who are now grown up and ready to, to leave the house to the nest, for the graduates from both high school and universities and colleges, we ask for your continued guidance for them and protection. Uplift and strengthen each graduate with your Holy Spirit so they may live a fruitful, a meaningful life, giving you glory, O oh God. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, as a potter fashions a vessel from humble clay, you form us into a new creation. Shape us day by day through your teachings, through the cross of our Christ, your Son. Until we pray as continually as we breathe and all our acts are prayer, we pray through Jesus Christ and in the mystery of the Holy Spirit. And now hear us, joining together and uniting in the prayer that your Son taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And the people said and say, Amen. And now, the charge and the blessing. From Mark 12, 29. Go in peace. Be in peace. Love the Lord your God with heart and soul and mind and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. May the blessing of the triune God, holy, holy, holy Lord, be with you now and travel with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Amen.